Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about Miguel Fay because, as I've said in the previous video, Miguel Fay is close uh, to leaving Barcelona. Barcelona and Renz they have um, reached an agreement. Well, they're close to reaching an agreement. And so we're going to be talking about his potential departure. Then as well, we're going to be looking towards Barcelona's opening match of La Liga of the 2024-2025 season against Valencia. We're going to be looking at some words from Hansi Flick. And as well, what can we expect on that match? And then lastly, we're going to be talking about some changes in regards to Barcelona's coaching staff. Uh, but guys, before I get started on the video, make sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. Everything's posted down below in the description. I'll go over there and check me out. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Miguel Fay. And uh, as I said in the intro, guys, Barcelona and French club Rennes, they are close to an agreement for Miguel Fay. And uh, the price tag that is being rumored in the media is 10 million euros plus 5 million euros in variables with a buyback option, which is very, very good, for 30 million euros. Uh, Renz, they still have to negotiate personal terms uh, with uh, Mikael Fay and his entourage. And um, you know, there are other clubs interested in him. And uh, keeping that in mind, knowing that other clubs are interested, I'm kind of disappointed that Barcelona, they're only selling Mikael Fay for 10 million euros. Uh, Porto, they did come in for Miguel Fe, they offered 15 million, but when Deco flew you know, to Portugal to negotiate that, Porto gave Barcelona an offer for 5 million euros. It's, you know, it's pretty disappointing knowing that you know, Barcelona, they can't sell Miguel Fe for you know, huge amounts of money, for example, like 30 million or even 40, knowing you know, what you know, some other players are selling for in the Premier League or the players from the Premier League are buying. But uh, it seems that Miguel Fe is going to be leaving the club and I think this is just Barcelona looking for some quick profit, you know, sell a player uh, and, you know, allow for the registrations of others, you know, make space. And, um, you know, having that buyback option is always good because if the player does turn out to be, you know, the next, I don't know, Ramos, Pique or, or any of, of the world's best center backs in Barcelona, they do have the option to buy him back and bring him back into the club. But guys, are you guys a fan of uh, Miguel Fay leaving the club? And if so, for what price? Is that 10 million euros plus 5 million euros in variables uh, satisfactory for you? Or are you guys, you know, in my boat and says, you know, maybe uh, you could have held out for a little bit more, but it's completely understandable. Barcelona right now, they're trying to make a quick profit. That way they can allow the registration of other players and just help Barcelona financially as of right now. But, you know, it, it, I just... It, the best it's not the best decision but now guys i'm going to be looking ahead towards that game against valencia and uh hansi flick he did speak in the press conference before the valencia match and it's some very interesting quotes and i want to talk about them um on today's video and uh, he starts off by saying we are really looking forward to our debut in valencia we know that the atmosphere is special, we are new to La Liga, and we are really looking forward to it. It will be tough because Valencia played well with a 4-4-2, and they like to play directly. They will probably have the goalkeeper out of position. And Barcelona, whenever they travel to the Mestalla, when they, whenever they play Valencia away from home, these games are always very tri tricky, it's always hard. You know, Valencia, they give you uh, such a difficult match, and this is, could be viewed as a trap game, you know, as a tricky game. And Barcelona, they're going to have to up their level significantly and be on their best game in order to win, you know, tomorrow's match, which I am going to be having a watch along for, guys. So, as always, make sure to tune in for that. But, um, you know, Valencia, they are going to be a tough opponent tomorrow. And uh, now uh, Flick continues. He talks about the registration of players. And it says, we now have 22 to 23 players uh, registered and we'll see tomorrow now they are all in the team and they're an option to play tomorrow Danny Omo is not yet an option for tomorrow because he has arrived recently and has few training sessions first he has to train to be able to help us and uh, you know at first I'm feeling disappointed you know that Danny Omo won't be able to debut tomorrow but it's completely understandable you know um Valencia, they have had a preseason. They've had you know roughly a month to prepare and everything. And Danny Omo is just returning back from vacations, and it's completely understandable why you know Hansi Flick will not be wanting to play uh, Danny Omo in tomorrow's match. But you know I do feel a little bit disappointed. But it's very very good to see 
not a lot of the Barcelona players they are registered, and uh, you know I have the list of of uh, Barcelona regis uh, registrations right now, and the only players who are not yet registered is uh, Danny Omo and Roque at the moment. Uh, it's Danny Omo. He will be receiving the number twenty, and um, Roque. It's a little bit tricky because you know as I've said before on previous videos, it's most likely that he's going to be leaving, leaving the club, and so. It doesn't seem likely that Roque is going to be registered. Uh, Alex Vaje, Hector Four, and Mar Paranal, they are going to be registered with the Barcelona B team. And uh, Pau Victor and Ansu Fati, we still don't know their numbers as of yet. But something interesting, guys, is that Pau Garcia is going to be wearing the number two. Pau Garcia is wearing the number two. And, um, you know, <laughs> Laminio Mal uh, wearing the number 19, as he did last season. And hopefully he is able to, um, you know, have a much better season uh, from last. But Flick continues, he talks about Pedri, he says, I really liked having him back. We'll see tomorrow. Maybe he can help us in the second half. I hope he'll be in Valencia. And so it's up to the doctors on whether they give Pedri the green light. But as I talked about on one of my previous videos, guys, Pedri, he is set to receive the medical green light soon. He did train with the group. He, he's feeling very well. He has very good sensations. And so it's most likely that he will be available for that match against Valencia, but he's most likely going to be coming off the bench. But as I said on that video, I prefer, you know, Hansi Flick to be safe with Pedri and say, you know what, in that game against Valencia, do not worry and just play him in the next in the, in the next weekend game. But now Flick, he talks about the young Infati and he says, I'm optimistic, but there's still time. We have more players available in the team and I hope they can return but I don't have a set date for their return. Their recovery is on track. And these are two players who, you know, we really don't know when they're coming back. Frankie, Frankie de Jong, we have absolutely no idea. And Fati, you know, his recovery is going okay. You know, it's on track, but you know, it's still, yeah, there's still some time left before uh, Fati is able to return to his best level. And he really didn't have a preseason, guys. He did, you know, start preseason, but he didn't go on that USA tour. And so even if Fati comes back from that injury, he's still going to have to go through a training process and uh, acclimatize himself to uh, the rhythm in which Barcelona are playing. And, uh, you know, hopefully both of these players can come back and, you know, return. Uh, that way we can have them in the squad and, and, and basically play them. Um, Flick talks about Lamine Yamal and whether he's going to be playing tomorrow. And he says, yes, he will play. And uh, Flick continues. He talks about the squad. He talks about the sensations. He says, I'm happy with the players I have now. We don't know. The rest is an unknown. I have a lot of faith in the club. And I'm happy with what the team has shown. When the injured players return, I'm sure we'll be a very strong team. He talks about Christensen, uh, and he says, I don't want to say much about the 11. I never do. There are no excuses about Gamper. We accept it. That's very, very good. Uh, the team was a little bit tired because we trained very hard. It was a game that didn't come at the best time because if you win, you have confidence, but we have recovered our energy. And as I said, you know, a, a couple minutes before in the video, hopefully Barcelona can have a much improved performance this weekend um, than, you know, the performance they showed against Monaco because that performance against Monaco was absolutely atrocious. It was really, really bad for Barcelona. And uh, I did say it's a preseason match, but now the season officially starts. The season starts tomorrow and Barcelona, they are in have to show their best level in order you know to, to start well and have good station good sensations about the season uh, and now he talks about you know whether Barcelona can compete against Madrid he says I've already answered this question before we have a lot of quality and football is about whether you win or lose we prepare for every game and right there he's not, not giving anything away and guys if you guys noticed um, you know, Handy Flick, the way he's responding to these questions he's not really giving straightforward answers you know he's holding every, uh, a lot back and, um, you know, I like this. He's giving nothing away. And uh, when he talked about the starting lineup on whether Chris is going to play or anything like that, uh, he, he didn't give a straightforward response. Uh, and now Flick talks about Gavi. And, guys, Gavi, Gavi not being at Barcelona is so, so painful. Um, he says, I'm very happy to see him every day. He's working very well, but he needs time. He's a great player, and I have to thank all the coaches who are around him and helping him. I don't want to put pressure on him. He's 20 years old, and we have to look after him. And Gavi, scheduled to return from that ACL injury that he suffered against Georgia um, you know, right before uh, the start of the, of the new year. Um, he will be returning roughly around November, and so in a whole year, uh, being out, that's that. That's such a shame. But you know, 
we don't want to rush Gavi or anything like that. We want him to be returned to his absolute best. And the last thing I did want to talk to you guys about is in regards to Thiago Alcantara. Because Thiago Alcantara, he has left Hansi Flick's coaching staff. He will no longer be at Barcelona. And he says, we have had an excellent relationship since he played in Munich. We called each other when he finished his career. And I told him he would be an excellent coach. He has helped the team and is a great person. Now he is leaving and we have Arnau from La Masia, who is also giving us a lot of support. I don't know if he will return or not. And talking about that, guys, I want to be talking about Arnau Blanco uh, because Arnau Blanco, he will be replacing Teo Alcantara and he was previously Barcelona's cadet, a, um, you know, bar bar uh, part of Barcelona's youth team setup and uh, he will be replacing Teo Alcantara as the assistant coach. And everything and the person who will be replacing uh, Arnau Blanco is actually um let me just bring it up uh Shek Bosch I I don't know if I'm pr um, pronouncing that right but uh, he will be replacing um Arnau Blanco as you know that assistant coach um Arnau Blanco who will become the assistant coach and um you know it, it's funny to see that shift in Barcelona management as, as of right there you see just the coaches promoted and everything but um you know Thank you, uh, Teo Alcantara, for you know, the brief service that you did give to Barcelona. And, um, you know, it's a shame that he's not going to be here for the entirety of the season because I do feel that if Teo was here, uh, he'd be able to give some very, very, um, you know, very good wisdom and be able to help Hansi Flick in that transition. But um, something is better than nothing. And Teo Alcantara, he was here uh, for the start of preseason and um, the start of the season as well. But uh, guys, that was it for the Barcelona news of the day. Definitely let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comments. Mikel Faye set to head to France. Hansi Flick talks about that match against Valencia. Let me know down, you, down below your predictions uh, about that match. How do you guys think that match is going to end? And lastly, uh, talking about those changes in Barcelona's coaching staff. Uh, but guys, that's it for the video. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Alegría